Get ready for an exciting journey as we embark on a multi-episode series where we delve into the world of metal mixing and we'll be able to take a mix that sounds like this and turn it into this. Welcome back to our journey through the essentials of metal mixing. Today we're tackling a crucial element that can make or break your sound, saturation. This is episode three where we decode the warmth and grit that give metal its edge. If you tuned into our previous episodes on EQ and compression, you're in for a treat as we explore the sonic alchemy of saturation. Think of saturation as the unsung hero in your mix. It's a process that adds harmonic complexity, making everything sound richer and more alive. But what are harmonics? They're the DNA of your sound, additional frequencies that resonate along with the fundamental note you're playing. Harmonics come in two flavors even and odd, even harmonics, which are multiples of two, four, and six, and so on, add a smooth musical quality to your sound. They're like the velvet lining of a guitar riff, providing depth and warmth. Odd harmonics, on the other hand, are the multiples of three, five, seven, and beyond. They bring tension and aggression, the snarl and the growl of a bass, the bite and the searing solo. And when it comes to the types of saturation, we have a few key players, tube, tape, and transistor. Tube saturation driven by vacuum tubes imparts a warm, round character with those even harmonics we talked about. It's like wrapping your sound in a cozy blanket of tone. Tape saturation harks back to the days of analog recording where pushing levels into the red on a tape machine adds a pleasing compression and subtle harmonic distortion. It's known for its ability to glue a mix together, give it that sought after vintage vibe. Lastly, transistor saturation. Think of this as the gritty cousin. It can introduce a more aggressive form of harmonic distortion, often associated with odd harmonics, adding texture and a raw edge to your track. Now that we have a handle on harmonics and the types of saturation, let's apply this knowledge. I'll be using the free mixing template and plugins I've shared. Links are in the description. So let's fire up the DAW and start cooking with saturation. So here we are in the DAW. I am going to solo this sine wave the sine wave is going to show us just one single note and then once we apply saturation we'll be able to see exactly what it's doing to the signal so you can see here it's just this one note an f3 and drives at zero once i start pumping up the drive now we're introducing these harmonics the more saturation you introduce, the more harmonics it introduces. So that's essentially it. That's all saturation is doing is introducing harmonics to our signal. It's giving it more character. It's giving it warmth. It's just an overall pleasing character. Uh, depending. You can do too much and it's not so pleasing. Now that we have that out of the way, let's see what we got on drums. So I got this saturation knob on here. It just gives it a little extra character, adds some compression, makes it sound good. Same thing here. If we go too much, no good. Pull it back a little bit. Gives it a nice crack and we're just shaving off the tops a little bit. And that's pretty much all I have here on the, the room. See if you do too much, a little subtle saturation, add some harmonics to the rooms, gives it a nice character. And then here, And then the full drum bus itself. So I have a uh, subtle saturation on 35 and the clip on here just to shave off any of those transients. And that gives us a nice even signal here. If I shut this off, still pretty good sound in drums. Let's 
but you can hear how much that's adding. Throw it in the mix. See how like they kind of get lost. So that is it for drums. Then if we move over to guitar, I mean, we've already went through what we did here with the amped roots. That's saturation. You see if I solo this. That's what a DI sounds like without saturation. Big difference. But that's that's all an amp is, is saturation, distortion. So we don't have to get too much into the, the guitar there. And then basically the same thing with a bass. You're just saturating the signal. If I turn this growler off, it sounds good, it's bass, but once you add the saturation, and then now that I have the bass and the guitar and everything together, Hey, you're going to have more saturation. See, if I turn that off, it gets kind of muffled, kind of loses it a little bit. Add that in. Get that grit, that aggressiveness. All that is is saturation. Saturation is essential for a metal mix to get things to cut through a mix. It's such a dense, dense type of music that you wouldn't be able to hear everything without saturation. Pretty wild. And then for our final little bit, we do have some saturation on our mix bus. We have this, we have this spheric satur saturator. That's another free one that's down in the description. And I'm adding probably 30 what's that maybe 40 percent saturation then this also has some compression to it too so so in your master bus you want to be way more subtle because you're affecting everything you don't want to go crazy but it will uh liven up your your entire mix and then i have this js exciter frequency at 2000 and only adding 3% harmonics. Mix them back in, minus 6.2. You can hear what that does. So that's it for episode three. That's saturation. The next episode will be on spatial effects. Our final episode will be on master bus. I'll go through the entire master bus chain with free plugins to get that professional sound you're looking for. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode. <laughs>